Hey everyone, Melissa here with The Creative Season. Well, it's week two of Fruit and Flowers, and this week, I am imagining we are at a breakfast table. We have this beautiful vase that is just exploding with purple and blue and magenta flowers, and we have a bowl of blueberries for maybe our oatmeal or a smoothie or something like that. But this is a very, almost a romantic picture, I think, but a lot of fun as well. And it really, it is just, it, it's lovely. It's not, we actually finish it under 20 minutes and then we add some splatters on at the end for fun. So I hope you grab your painting supplies, paint with me. We're going to have a blast. Hey everyone. Well, we are back with our second week of flowers and fruit or fruit and flowers. So you would like to say it. And today um, we have, I can just put this, uh, I, one of the sketches I was doing, we're going to be doing lots of blues, blueberries and then a vase where we're going to keep the vase white this time and um, really we'll have flowers just kind of exploding out so we will not sketch that top of the vase. So if you're sketching along with me, feel free to use a pencil. I've used a micron pen so you can see it a little bit better. But what I've done is I've just done a very light sketch and I'll come in here. I don't sketch the top of that, of the vase, and even the top of the handle. Very light sketch. We've got our blueberries, which I just was thinking about, you know, a different kind of fruit um, that is also kind of going with our color theme. So we still have lots of blue in here, but we're adding just a little bit of mauve and purple, a hint of green, no yellows this time. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is really just a fun, easy sketch. It's a little bit smaller. Now on this one, you can see where it's on a big piece of paper, lots of open space. And on this one, I just have it a bit more compact. So whatever you would like to do, this is about a nine by, I think, um, what does it say a nine by, probably a nine by nine, nine by, it might be about nine by seven is what it is. But watercolor paper, I've got my vase. Again, we're going to leave that white. I'm just going to start with my flowers. Now with my flowers, you can see my sketches are pretty simple. In this, um, the picture I was working off of, they had hydrangeas, which I love. So you, those ones, you know, they're always like kind of trios of little flowers, right? So that's what I'm going to start doing. I am just going to start blocking in my hydrangeas first. They are, and I love bouquets that have some distinct, you know, different kinds of flowers, all different distincts versus like, you know, rose bouquet is beautiful or a, a Gerber daisies, but if it's all like red roses, for example, it can be really, they all look like it's just a, a lot of roses, right? So if you try to paint that, it can look a bit, um, I'm not going to say a mess, but it can just, it can get kind of blobby sometimes, right? Um, so it's, I like doing a bouquet that has different flowers with distinctive features. So again, remember too, the hydrangeas are kind of a bit of a mushroom shape, the overall shape of the flower. So this one's kind of hiding behind. I'm going to actually add some purple here to them in just a minute, but wanted to just get, start having, adding them in. They have their little blooms. I always think they look almost like a tree flower. It's just like a little mini tree full of flowers. So again, don't forget that shape overall. It should be a bit of, um, it's not a perfect circle. It's a little bit like a mushroom depending on how it's shaped and where it's sticking out. So I'm actually going to move my water right here. It's a little bit closer and hopefully out of the way of the camera. And I'm just going to add in here a little bit of, um, again, it's some purple. You can use some mauve if you'd like. I just have my dioxazine purple over here and just adding in some color. That can be nice too if you want to show where maybe there's a little bit more shadowing. And then I'm going to probably add some more blue to really blend it in nicely. Just a little bit over here. And we're, again, we're using a lot of the similar colors this time. I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of, uh, let's see, I'll have some French marine. Uh, ultra, uh, the French ultramarine blue. So I'm going to go ahead and one of the beautiful flowers over here that's sticking out. I'm going to go ahead and lay that down. And I am just, again, I like this idea of the bouquet with the flowers just sticking out every which way. And a big petal over here. You're kind of seeing the side view of this flower. And then the inside in here, which we'll lay down. Okay, I'm going to pick up some magenta next. Let's add so just a really light wash of magenta. I'm not doing it too heavy. And the flower down here, just soft, soft colors of this magenta. And then what I'll come back in, what I will do is I'll come back in with a deeper magenta to add in some of that sense of, you know, like these are almost peony type flowers where you have basically 
dozens and dozens, dozens of petals. So how do we kind of make them pop and get that, create that look of lots and lots of petals? I'll come in and lay down a darker color of magenta. And I'm gonna do one more right over here. I'm kind of working around too with the color. I wanna spread out the different colors here. And I'm gonna grab the lighter, like the cerulean blue. I'll pop that up. I'll bring that up here and we'll go over here. Lots of petals and then the ones that are kind of holding it all together. And over here as well. This is a flower that's looking straight at us, right? So you can almost look like right inside. And let me pull this in just a bit. Oh good, it's actually pulled in pretty nicely here. I'll put it in just a little bit closer so you can see that. Again, this is the cerulean blue and almost looking at lots of layers. So I'm going to add in just with the tip of my paintbrush, adding in more and more layers. Really trying to keep it nice and thin. I'm getting a bit of color into that mauve flower next to me, but I'm, I'm not bothered by that. That's okay. I'm going to take a little bit of the French blue and I am going to go ahead, even as the paint is pretty wet, and just add some color right right in here and I'm going to come back up here and create another flower too that's almost looking like it's just staring right at us but it's a smaller one almost just kind of trying to squish out right this is a flower party here and they are all fighting a bit for their places and coming back my hydrangea down here it's getting a little bit away from me so we'll just add in kind of the base here that looks nice Okay, so this flower right here, I'm looking at this color going, okay, let's see, I think I'm going to make that a beautiful purple. And starting on the inside, keeping that tight, and then starting to move out, moving around, adding in all those petals. It's fun to create these flowers, we don't have to make it perfect. We don't have to make them really exact. They're very, very cute. Just bringing that around. I'm gonna grab that purple again, and then I'm gonna actually create another little one right here, just a little flower popping out a purple one. This is gonna be a smaller flower, and just working that around just like that. And that looks cute. I'm gonna take a little bit of the purple, back up in the hydrangea here and just add in some detail. Okay, and that's looking really nice. It looks very, very lovely. So that's a good start for that. Let's move down to our blueberries. For our blueberries, I'm gonna pick up, I think I'm gonna go back to like an old, if you have an ultramarine or you have that French blue, which is really nice. Now I'm always a big believer too that nothing is too perfect, right? So we of course had a couple of blueberries fall to the ground here. So I'm gonna set those to the side and maybe I'll even just for the sake, maybe one more. One more, just kind of fell to the side. Remember with your blueberries, leave some white on them. Don't completely cover them up in pure blue. In fact, I'm gonna come back and add just a little bit of purple. You're not even gonna notice it really as a distinct color, but it's gonna add some depth. And let me make sure you can see that. I just realized, I'm so sorry, that was not helpful. So you could just see the edge of my blueberries. So there they are. There's the blueberries there, there's the three. I'm just adding the side right there. And then what I'm gonna come back and do is pick up a little bit of purple and then just, just kind of touch some of them, not even all of them. Because blueberries do almost have that cold, dark blue, don't they? And a little bit down there. I'm going to come over. I'm going to take my light magenta and color in this lovely blueberry bowl. I was thinking maybe this is a breakfast scene. Maybe we're making oatmeal and we're going to add fresh blueberries. Maybe it's a Sunday morning. We're getting ready to sit down together. Okay. I'm gonna come right down here, and yep, that color's gonna bleed a little bit, and that's okay. I'm gonna come back and add some more magenta. And just pull the whole thing down. And then we'll, we'll let it bleed for just a second, and then I'll come back up. I'm gonna add a little bit more magenta here. 
Oh, that's a lot of magenta. That's okay. That's okay. It'll be a nice, bright <laughs> blueberry bowl. And you see too, I'm not too concerned about coloring everything in. I'm gonna take that magenta, come back up here, and on some of my beautiful posies, my peonies, and adding in some detail in the tips of these beautiful flowers, maybe even just at the bottom too, giving them a little bit more of a touch of boldness. And that just makes the whole thing come alive, doesn't it? I love that. I love that. Go ahead and grab two. If you have some, either some phthalo blue or maybe that ultramarine blue, I'm gonna come back over here. I'm just gonna give a pop to some of these other flowers just to wake them up a little bit. Even in this purple flower, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue right in there and then come back in and add some more purple. Add some little bit more color here. Pick up the purple again and just touch that so it's a super dark. I love that. It's really, really dark. I'm going to come back up in the hydrangeas and add in a little bit more color up here, letting them pop a little bit more, right? And if you want them to pop a little bit more, you can just kind of make them a little bit bigger. Add in some blue here so we're all together. That looks lovely. That looks super, super nice. I'm going to come back right over here with this guy too. Pick up a little bit more of that purple. You could even put a, a, just a spot of magenta. That would be beautiful as well. I can pick up some magenta here and just touch that in. That magenta just gives a pop of, of really, really a fun color, right? Okay, let's pick up our green. We're going to pick up a little bit of green. There's not a lot of green in this painting and I almost considered leaving it completely out. And you can. If you're really liking this color scheme and you want to add just a little bit of blue for the shadowing, you could really, we'll add some shadowing down here, leave out the green, and that would just create a very, it would, a lovely, you know, blue and purple harmony, which is lovely. Um, I'm going to go ahead, but if you, if you have green, make sure you have a stem that's fallen down below. I find that we need a little bit more green than the minimal green that's in the vase just to bring it all together. So I've got some green down there. I'm doing that one first because I want to add some shadows to it and we need it to dry just a tad bit. The green leaves in here, there's not a ton. It does add a little bit of um, warmth to the painting and just a really, a, a, a little bit of a different look. So I've got my green hydrangea here. Um, if you have any stems that you think are sticking out, definitely, or flowers I should say, that almost look like they're floating, add a stem to them. That'll help ground them a bit. I'll bring this one right in here. This is such a thick bouquet, you may not really have much green to show, and that's fine and completely, completely normal. These are kind of all moving outside. So now that we have the green, again, there's not too much. I'm gonna rinse that brush really well. I am gonna pick up the cerulean blue, and I am gonna get a lot of water on it because I don't want a lot of paint, because I'm gonna kinda of create that shadow now. Now with the shadow, I'm gonna come right under the flowers as close as I can without submerging, without merging, right, where the flowers start bleeding into the vase. I'm gonna come over here on my the, the tip of the vase or the handle and move that. I'll pick up a little bit more blue just right here. I'm then gonna rinse off my brush, and then I'm gonna pull that paint down. I'm going to show off a little bit here. I'm actually going to leave a lot of white, but showing where it might be bending, where the light's reflecting off of it. I'm going to pick it up just a little bit of yellow. I'm not, I'm sorry, blue. This the same cerulean blue. And again, it's almost, we're just showing the shadows. We're not actually trying to create a blue vase here. So just the shadows. Now that I have that, I'm going to come down under my blueberries, under the blueberry bucket, I have the blueberry container, and I'm just doing a light shadow here. I'm going to pick up a little bit more blue. I'm going to come right underneath, rinse it off if it's too dark, come right underneath the green, and also shadow there, and then shadow under the vase. Now, depending on where our light was, we potentially could have a quite a long shadow. If the, if the light's coming off or coming on from the other side, we may not have much of a shadow at all. I'm going to just do a bit of a shadow here. I want a light shadow as if maybe it's overhead and so the shadow's not too. There's a shadow but it's not huge. 
there's not the long shadow, so to speak, and just come back around. Shadow also they really gives depth, right? It helps everything look like it's not floating. Put a shadow here where this, the handle, would be casting a shadow too. And then just look around to see if you need more of a shadow on your blueberries. Sometimes it's just a touch, just around the blueberries. And I am going to come right back up underneath my blueberry dish and add a little bit more shadow here and shadow here. If you feel it's too much, just dab it a bit. If it feels like it's too harsh of a shadow too, you can always come back, take the water, and then just move that, move that around. Okay, we're really coming up on the end here. And this is the part two where, where do I want more distinction? I may have lost a little bit of my distinction in the blueberries when they were all, the color was fading into the bush. Not in the bush, I can't even talk today. Into the dish. So I'm gonna come back up here with my blueberries. I do like the way the color, the purple, and the blue really did a nice job of merging together. This may be something too where after everything is dry, you come back with your micron pen and you might wanna just add in some distinguishing characteristics. Maybe you wanna draw in that line again. But let's pretend we don't. We're not gonna do any more micron pen. The other thing I can do is come back now with my magenta and then without touching the top, I can just go like this and just create that darker line. It may not work because the blueberries are a bit wet, but that's okay. If they blend in a little bit, I'm okay with that. Then I'm gonna do a quick sweep around the rest of the painting. Is there anything else that needs just a bit more color? This might be too, do you wanna do a little bit of splattering? That could be really pretty on a painting like this. I'm not gonna do anything around the edges. So what if I come in, I take a little bit of magenta, for example, and I just come up here and we add a little bit of splattering here. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that blue and we splatter that there. And again, not a lot of splattering, a little bit over there. And I'm using a pretty small brush and it's pretty close to the, the, um, the paper. So the splatters are small and maybe just a bit more. The only other thing I might do is a, maybe a bit of a green splatter because we didn't have a lot of green on here and I would just splatter right on top there and maybe right there, and that's it. Very nice. And then we can back it up a little bit more, and we are done. Very, very pretty. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you ever thought it was like, oh, too much, if you ever thought the splatters were too much too, you could certainly come back in with a paper towel, and you can just ease off of them. You can come and then come back and do a wash, all different ways to change the look of the painting. I kind of like the splatters too. I might come back and add a few more back here, um, but it's it's lovely. I'm enjoying the fruit and the flower series. I hope you are too. I'm going to see you guys really, really soon.